Hey, welcome to another Chill MTG. We got some vintage cube going on here. And hey, there's a pack Mox Ruby, pick one, pack one. The fractured identity also pretty strong, but when you're faced with power in your first pack, you really got to pick it up. Fast mana, super important. So we'll pick up the Mox Ruby and see what comes along. There's a Chandra. That's one of the stronger planeswalkers in the cube, in my opinion. Fast mana kind of makes you want to go aggressive. Uh, at least with this red mox, you know, I'm not really looking at blue like treachery right now. So there's a Dragon's Rage Channeler and the Chandra. I mean, Chandra is going to be our pickup here. Just kind of looking around to see what else we could pick up. Not a big fan of Thalia, though. Thalia does work pretty well with fast mana. And there's a Dark Ritual and a Bone Shredder. So we'll pick up the Chandra and then and, and again, just kind of see how this draft is shaping up. Ooh, so... Mox Diamond, just kind of go Mox and Tribal. I like that. There's also a Thundermon, a Wooded Foothills in here. Just a lot of strong cards in Tomb as well, but I mean, Mox Diamond's going to keep us open and allow us to splash for another color pretty easily. So that's going to be our pickup. Love that art by Dan Frazier as well. Beautiful. Here for pick four, there's a Colligan's Command. I really like that card. This is a pretty late Crater Hoof Behemoth, but not really looking to do the green ramp thing with our first three picks here. So I think Colligan's Command is pretty strong and uh, we can splash it here off our mox. So happy to continue to pick and slash cut red cards. Swift Spear, Grave Titan, Duress, definitely the three strongest cards in the pack for us. So the question is, how aggressive do we want to be? Do we want to get this Swift Spear and go really aggressive? Or do we want to just get some stronger late game in the Grave Titan? And I think, you know, Swift Spear is replaceable enough. Grave Titan uh, has a pretty unique effect. It's pretty game ending on its own. So we'll pick up the Grave Titan. And then, ooh, Duretti there in our colors. Okay, so we're shaping up to be to do some Rakdos shenanigans here, and I love it. Two strong Planeswalkers, some Mana Acceleration, K Command, and a Grave Titan. Great start for our draft. Love it. Uh, there's a Haunted Ridge to help us fix, so I think that's our pickup. Definitely over the Dire Fleet Daredevil. What else do we have here? Seasoned Pyromancer versus probably a Mesmeric Fiend. I think Seasoned Pyromancer a little bit stronger, though. The interaction with our opponent with Mesmeric Fiend and taking a card out of their hand is pretty good. Uh, since we have the acceleration, I'm just going to pick up the Season Pyromancer here first. There's a Bloodthirsty Adversary versus a Knight's Whisper. Yeah, I think the card draw is, is pretty good here. We don't have any spells for the Adversary right now. Uh, so that's why I wanted to pick up the Knight's Whisper to start with. There's a Bone Shredder and a Dam. I think, I think we can take up the Dam. It's basically what a Bone Shredder does, except cheaper and without as much limitation. Battlesphere, an Ophiomancer. We'll pick up the Ophiomancer. I don't think we're ramping into a battle sphere. We're not doing any Tinker shenanigans, though. The Ophiomancer may not make the main deck. And nothing here. We're kind of wrapping out pack one. We'll just throw a Umbreal Rites in the sideboard. Ooh, happy to see that Swiss Spear table, though. That's awesome. Gives our deck a little aggressive flavor. All right, pack two. Here we go. <laughs> And the rich get richer, huh? What's a great follow-up to a Mox Ruby? Uh, a Black Lotus. Definitely our pickup. And uh, we'll we'll definitely get either one of these red cards or the Dismember to wheel, hopefully. So we'll just throw that Black Lotus in our pile and carry on like no big deal. Having a Lotus makes our four mana Planeswalker look even stronger. And a Mana Crypt to follow up. This is some fast mana we got going on. Hopefully we can get some explosive starts in these games. I do like the Inquisition and the Hellrider and the Scalding Tarn, but I'm, I'm not going to pass a Mana Crypt. And with as much acceleration as we have here, so our options are like Arid Mesa, Marsh Flats, but like Inferno Titan is super reasonable considering we have a Mox, a Lotus, and a Mana Crypt. Well, two Moxen. So do we want to take the Mesa for a fetch or do we want the Inferno Titan? Usually I eat my vegetables, but we have so much fast mana. I just, I don't, I can't pass up this six mana Titan. And I just love the way this deck is shaping up. A choice here between like Firebolt, Dark Confident, maybe P and Kieran. Uh, yeah, I think I want the Firebolt. Eh, it's either Firebolt or Dark Confident. No, I think I want the Firebolt. Just some interaction. We don't have a ton going on. Well, and there's a Lightning Bolt, so that's even better. So that just short up some our early game spells a little bit. I love it. Firebolt, Lightning Bolt pair really well with Monastery Swift Spear. 
We don't have a lot of creatures going on here. Only five creatures. So we may lean towards picking up a couple more. Uh, you know, Steamkin is a creature, but it's not the greatest pretty much filler. If we have to run it, we will. So I think we need to start prioritizing creatures here. And here we have a Chupacabra and an Eidolon. And Chupacabra is just some great two-for-one value, especially with a Mana Crypt. We can get that Chupacabra out really early. Maybe that Eidolon will wheel. Ooh, Fire Blast, Skull Clamp, Ember Shieldbreaker. All these cards are really good. Think, so we don't have a lot of creatures, so Skull Clamp kind of goes down in value a little bit. Uh, well, we do have the Duretti, and that makes 1-1 one, one tokens. And we have an Ophiomancer. Okay, so now that we have, since we have those cards that make 1-1 one, one tokens, actually the Skull Clamp's really, really good. So we'll, we'll pick that up. That can just be infinite card draw. Ooh, see, yep, there's a Dismember and a Char. The Char hits Planeswalkers, where the Dismember doesn't. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I have enough removal for creatures, and so the reason I'm picking up the Char here is just to hit Planeswalkers or, or go face. Because we have the Chupacabra, Dam, Firebolt, Lightning Bolt, Duretti. I, I think we're kind of, we're, we're poised well against creature decks, and so I just don't want to lose to some random Planeswalkers. So the fact that the Char can hit face or walkers is why I picked that up. There's a Hellrider on the wheel. With his fast mana, I think that's the right pick here. We don't need Imp, and I don't really need to through to breach our Titans. Still only seven creatures in the deck. Don't think we're running any of these cards. I would like to pick up a little bit more fixing as well. Your choice between Figure Destiny versus Dark Confidant. Uh, since we have the Skull Clamp, I think I, I don't need as much card draw. We'll, we'll just grab the figure as an aggressive creature. Ooh, there's an even better Signet that'll replace the Golgari Signet. Still not sure if the Signets will get played. Yeah, I don't think I'm playing a Blood Ghast. I just don't think it fits. So looking to pick up maybe a couple more creatures, definitely some fixing. We're going to have to make some cuts after that. Let's see what pack three brings us. Kiki Cheeky, Splinter Twin. There's also a Shriekmon, a Nashi. Nothing great for us here. I'm leaning towards a creature, so like either Nashi or Shriekma. And I think I want to go with the Shriekma just because we have so much ramp. Just we, we may not have to evoke it. We can just cast it pretty easily. I don't have as many creatures that I can ninjutsu the Nashi off of. So yeah, we'll we'll grab the Shriekma. Not a great pack three, but our packs one and two are really good, so we can't complain. This is a young Peasy and an Incinerate and a Vista. I think, yeah, I'm, I need to take the Vista here. We, we don't have enough fixing, and I, I want to make sure we can play our spells on curve. Ooh, Zealous Conscript's quite good. There's also a Kroxa and a Him. I don't think we're a Him deck. Kroxa will probably table. So I do really like Zealous Conscripts. I think it's very strong. So I think that's going to be our pickup, especially with all this ramp. This ramp is really just enabling us to cast, you know, four or five mana value spells a lot earlier. And Conscripts can just win games on its own, removing a blocker and attacking with your opponent's creature. It's pretty, pretty spicy. It's also a reanimate. I mean, reanimate is a consideration since we have so much removal, but I, I do like Conscripts. Ooh, this pack is kind of a miss for us. I guess there's a Snuff Out. Snuff Out's about the only card in here that fits in our deck. So we'll throw it in the sideboard for now. I, I mean, maybe Snuff Out's probably better than Dam since we can cast it for free. Or, you know, maybe we replace the Chupacabra. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, there's a Black Leaf Cliffs for some fixing. I think we just need to take that. Even though there is, there's a Toxic Deluge as well. I think we have enough removal. So I just want to get the fixing. Even more removal. There's also a Koth. Koth could be pretty good. Infernal Grasp is a little bit better. It's definitely between these three cards. I... I think Infernal Grasp, I guess, is just an upgrade over Dam. Ooh, there's a Gonti. Yeah, we'll slam Gonti. Love Gonti. And there's a Badlands. Okay, great. That's really going to help our fixing. A fetch would be great, but we just we weren't able to pick one up appropriately. Here, yeah, sure, we'll just throw a Splinter Twin in the board. Okay, there's Young Peasy. That should be good. We have a lot of spells. And it's an aggressive creature, so I like that. There's the Kroxa on the wheel. And it looks like we're rounding out pack three here. So here's how the deck ended up. 
We got our top end with the Titans and we got some super great ramp in the Ruby, Diamond, Crypt, and Lotus. Some strong walkers in the middle for the mid game and hopefully we can ramp those out. And I really love this Rakdos playstyle. So with that, we're going to jump straight into a sweet, sweet match two. Here we go. Okay, here we are. Match two. Looks like we're on the play. Sweet. What do we want to do with this hand? I think this is keepable. Since we have Duretti and Rakdos Signet, obviously a Mox or something would be amazing here, but not quite bad enough to mulligan. So we'll lead out on the Swamp, see what our opponent's up to. Island, no plays. We'll get our Signet down. Slower start for this deck, I think, but I'm okay with it right now. Hmm, our opponent leaves up two blue mana. I don't really want to get this Duretti countered. So our options are either just play young PZ or to try to just slam the Duretti. I think I just want to play PZ here. That'll play around miscalc and things like that. And that resolved pretty quickly. All right, Esper for our opponent. Okay, and then they come down with a Metal Worker. Unfortunately, our Shriek Ma not target that otherwise I would slam it so we're gonna have to play our Duretti here and I don't want them untapping with the metal worker let's see if they block I doubt they will I would have been happy to trade no okay so we'll play Duretti and I'm actually gonna sacrifice this signet to destroy that metal worker right now sets us back on mana a little bit we won't be able to play the grave titan but I just can't have them untapping with a metal worker and six cards in hand See a metal worker. Oh, Duretti, you're awesome. Mmm, chorus of portal. All right, well, that's going to take us a turn to, to deal with here. We can uptick on our Duretti and we can downtick again the next turn to kill the chorus of portal. And we're going to get this Chandra online here and we'll uptick Chandra to see what we exile. Just a mountain. Okay, that's fine. And we'll get in there with the PZ and pass the turn. Our opponent is going to be able to draw two cards here off the portal. But I like our position for right now. I mean, we, we have two strong Planeswalkers on the battlefield. And we'll be able to uptick and play Grave Titan next turn if we want to, using Chandra's mana ability. All right, so our opponent returns Chandra to our hand and draws a card with a cryptic. That's an interesting line of play. We'll have six mana available, but I want to get, so first things first, let's get this chorus of portal off the battlefield. All right, awesome. And our opponent's holding up a single blue mana. So if they have spell pierce, uh, we could play around that by playing the Chandra, but I think I kind of just want to slam this grave Titan. Let's see, let's attack first and see what our opponent does. Our opponent has not played a lot of creatures, so Chandra may not be that valuable in this matchup. So a little aggressive here. We could get dazed. Let's see what happens. All right, sweet. Our Grave Titan resolved. That's great. And we'll pass the turn back. So our opponent is facing down lethal next turn. Gilded Lotus. Well, that's not going to do it. Into Urza. Okay. So we can still... We can... Uh, we can get in for lethal here this turn. We can evoke our Shriek Ma to kill Urza, and we can downtick on Chandra to uh, kill the Construct if we want to, but I'm just going to just straight up play the Shriek Ma right now, and if our opponent wants to block, that's fine. Probably a little bit of a misplay there. We could have gotten in for lethal had we just evoked and played Chandra and downticked. So, bad on us. Hopefully we're not super punished here. Hmm. Upheaval. Okay, well, let that be a lesson to you, to me, to us. Get lethal when you can, because now we're facing a little bit of an uphill battle. We don't have any fast mana. Our opponent is down at six, but man, it's super frustrating. We could have had him dead last turn. Definite misplay. Yep, just the land. So we're just going to be able to play one land and pass here, unfortunately. Let's see if we can claw back our way from that mistake. All 
All right, following that up, people. Ooh, this Mox Ruby was a great draw. It's going to let us to get out our Planeswalkers that turn earlier. Spell Pierce. All right, well, I'd rather Duretti get Spell Pierce than Arshandra. So next year we can, or next turn we can, oh, Tangle Wire? All right, well, that's going to slow things down a little bit. Should have just gotten Lethal Chill. We'll play our lands. I uh, don't want to draw any more lands, so we'll just crack the Vista to thin out a little bit more. And next turn, we'll be able to get our young PZ on the battlefield. Conscripts, okay. Any pressure we can put back on will be great since our opponent is at six. And then this next turn, we'll be able to get Chandra on the battlefield as well. And I'm probably just going to uptick Chandra to deal damage. Batter Skull. All right. Well, hmm. So the Shriek Ma is still dead. Dead card. Looks like we're going to have to probably just down tick on the, sh on the germ token here. So we can get in and they, Chandra's definitely going to die. And they could equip their Batter Skull to their Skydiver. Yep. All right, so they're going to gain some life. That's going to be good. What are they going to attack? They attack Chandra. That makes sense. But now we have a Zealous Conscripts. This is why I love Zealous Conscripts. Because we'll be able to steal. Well, okay. Or we can Shriek Ma here. I think, see, stealing the Zealous Conscripts, uh, again, would have been a better lawn. Because then we could have attacked for the win right there. All right, so that's punt number two in this game. It's like, do we not want to get lethal? Ginja taxis. Yeah, see, now we have another problem. I mean, this will be fine. We'll be able to steal it with Zealous Conscripts and win, but we really should have won last turn as well. So really poorly played game. We're still going to sneak out the victory here. But geez, we need to, we need to just do a lot better than that. If you ever think you play perfectly, go back and rewatch your games and you'll see how poorly you played. All right, so we'll take out the Shriek Ma really bad against artifacts. At least the snuff out can target artifacts. Another consideration is dam, but let's run this one back. Uh, we're, we're definitely up against a you know an artifact ramp control deck. All right, here we are. Game two will be on the draw. And this seems like an excellent hand. Again, no ramp. I mean, we got two Moxen, a Crypt, and a Lotus, and haven't seen... I guess we saw the Moxen last game. We'll lead out on Mountain, though we could lead out on Badlands to have both Snuff Out and Lightning Bolt up. Signet, okay. Yeah, I'd love to have this Duretti out super fast. We'll play the Swamp. This turns on our Snuff Out. Thirst for Discovery from our opponent. Okay, so they're going to draw some cards. And for our next turn, okay. Uh, man, they have a blue, so they do have Spell Pierce available. But we just need to get this ready on the board, I think. Yeah, man, right into the Spell Pierce. I think that was another punt, probably, to be honest with you. We knew they had Spell Pierce, and we played right into it. There's a Tangle Wire. That's going to slow things down a little bit. It's going to hurt our opponent about as much as it hurts us. And hopefully we can just draw one of our Titans or something here soon. There's a Ruby. Doesn't really help out much right now. Just gonna hold Ruby for now, though. That's probably a mistake. I'm not sure because we can tap it for the Tangle Wire. It probably doesn't matter. Urza from our opponent. Okay. Well, we can deal with that. We can snuff out the Urza and bolt the construct. 
And I want to I want to snuff out right. Okay, we should have snuffed out before the construct was made because now they have access to blue mana again. Let's lightning bolt the construct. Okay, now we can snuff out the Urza. Another land. Okay, kind of flooding out. Probably should just cast this for full life right now and play around days. If we get days, that's going to be really bad, especially while we hold a Mox Ruby. Okay, we didn't get dazed. Again, I'd say that was probably a misplay. There's better ways to play around that. Thieving Skydiver. Okay, yeah, okay, that was that was a reason why to hold the Mox Ruby. I forgot they played that first game. Gonti was a great draw. Get in here, Gonti. Playing a land to play around uh, Miscalc, though this doesn't play around Mana Leak. <laughs> There's the Mana Leak, and we have the Max Ruby in hand. All right, so that's punt like number four. If we manage to pull out a victory here, it's just going to be sure sheer luck because we are playing very, very poorly. All right, so our opponent's got about infinite mana. Battle ball, yeah. It's pretty good. We need, okay, Grave Titan's a good draw off the top. Happy to see that one. Million mana here for our opponent. Jinja Taxis. Okay. And a chorus of portal, which they get two of because of Jin. All right. Our opponent's popping off here. We get a Chandra. So we need to get this mere battle sphere off the great off the battlefield. I, I kind of want to attack with the Grave Titan here and see how they block. I'm happy if they block with. The Jin is Jitaxis as well because we can, we'll be able to down tick on our Chandra to kill something. So it looks like they want to get our Grave Titan off the battlefield, which is good. And they are going to block with the Jin. Okay, so that's good for us. I mean, our opponent is going to draw three cards a turn. Unfortunately, it's nothing we can do about that. But now we can get our Chandra on the battlefield and down tick on the Jin Jitaxis. Double course of portal. All right. And then Gilded Lotus. So they have infinite mana. Do they have the payoff? Emery. Emery can get back Mirror Battle Sphere, so that's definitely a problem. So let's tick up. Okay, so there's Call Against Command, which is good. That'll be we'll be able to kill the Emery, and I think we just need to take care of one of these course of portals. What else is in our hand? We also could get back Grave Titan if we want to. So the play line is to kill a course of portal, kill Emery, uh, or to get back Grave Titan, kill Emery. I'm going to, since we have the zombies on the battlefield already, I just want to kind of limit some of their card draw. I don't know if that was right. We'll hold back one zombie to defend our Chandra and pass the turn. We do still have the Firebolt in the graveyard that we can flash back. Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Ooh, it's pretty good. Pro red from us. So let's uptick Chandra, see what else we got going on. Ooh, there's a Hell Rider. Yeah, I think I want to cast that. Now we can't attack because Sphinx has lifelink. So we're going to have to still find a way to try to deal with this Sphinx. And yeah, with the firebolt's not going to help right now. We could swing in for four and firebolt, but then they'll block and gain life. So we're just going to have to pass right now, I think. What could we draw? What is in our deck here? So our opponent's getting in there. Ooh, that's strange how they didn't attack Chandra. That's got to be a mistake from our opponent. 
There's an upheaval. So I think that's going to be game two here. They just will be able to replace Sphinx. All right. I don't know if there's any other changes we want to make here. Oh, we do have answers for Sphinx. Okay, so Sphinx is just pro red and green. So we could, you know, Infernal Grasp or one of our removal spells, Shriekma, Chupacabra. So we do have answers for Sphinx. All right, game three, we're on the play. Oh man, still no fast mana. I mean, this is this is a mediocre keep at best for sure. We'll lead out on mountain, see what our opponent wants to do. Windswept Heath from them. Okay, more lands, not what we need. I, let's get this PZ on the battlefield. It represents a little bit of pressure and I don't have anything to ramp into here with the Signet yet. Signet from our opponent. There's an Infernal Grasp, so that's an answer to Sphinx if they ever get one down. Uh, we will be able to Rakdos Signet into Kroxa here. Didn't play Kroxa. All right, there's punt number five. Course of Portal from our opponent and a Swiss Spear. We get our Swiss Spear down. We'll get in there for three. Our opponent discarded a Metal Worker off the Kroxa. Crux is not getting escaped anytime soon. We just don't have any cards in our graveyard. Probably not the greatest deck for Croxa, or at least that this hand wasn't. We're just not casting a lot of spells. All right, so our opponent tinkers, and they sacrifice the course of Portal. Interesting. I would have sacrificed the Signet there for sure. I mean, if they have Blight Steel, that's probably just game. But if they put Sphinx the Steel Wind out, we have an answer for that in hand. Gilded Lotus. And then Metamorph. Copying their Gilded Lotus. So they just want infinite mana. Interesting. They must have Sphinx in hand, which is why they didn't tinker for it. All right, well, I'm going to cast Firebolt here to trigger PZ and Monetary Swiss Spear. Because then we can flash it back to trigger it a second time. I'm just trying to get as much damage on our opponent here as possible, put them under as much pressure. This will allow us to swing in for five after doing an additional four damage with the Firebolt. Hmm. Looks like we might be getting Cryptic Command. Yep, they're going to Counterspell and tap the team. Dang it. All right, so not getting in for five. But maybe we'll look out. I mean, if now they don't have a Counterspell for Infernal Grasp. Ginger Taxis, okay. Oh, there's our Lotus. So it counters the first sorcery artifact or instant spell. So let's cast our Lotus so it triggers Ginger Taxis. That'll counter it, but now we can cast our Infernal Grasp. That'll trigger our Swiss Spear again and our PZ. And we're no cards in hand, but let's get in there. It's a decent amount of damage, seven. Our opponent's down to three. <laughs> that was a funny way to use Black Lotus just to get Jinja Taxis counter done. Opponent plays big to fairy and looks like they uptick. Upheaval, but they have no mana available. All right, that was a pretty desperation upheaval. I would love to draw like Mox or something right now because we can Swiss Spear and get in there for one and then play our Signet next turn and get in there for two. So we have them on a two turn clock here. Inferno Titan, not going to do it. So, yep, that's our plan right now. Just get in there with Swiss Spear. Good old Haste. Haste and Prowess. This puts our opponent at two. Skydiver. Okay. Well, we can still trigger Prowess and it's going to force our opponent to block, or we can play Young PZ. I think I just want to force our opponent to chump here. So we'll play the Signet, 
It'll make our Swiss Spear 2 3, and then we can attack. They have to block. Signet from our opponent. There's a Chandra. Okay, that'll trigger our Swiss Spear again. So that should do it, even if they counter this somehow. All right. Whew. Somehow we managed to win that match despite playing awfully. Let that be a lesson to you. Never give up. But uh, man, everybody makes mistakes. And so did I many times that game. A little cringeworthy. Thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for chilling here. And I'll see you next time.